Good morning. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. This is the Angels in Politics broadcast, and I'm your host, the creative and artistic manifestation, the white collar goon. All right, so you have, well, I have you here in front of my lovely home, but I'm, the home is just where the heart is, but no, like, the home is nature. The home is nature. Look at the trees. Do you see the sunlight? Do you see the sky? Oh my gosh. So, let's have a seat, please. Have a seat with me. Um, we're going to get comfortable here and we're going to have a conversation. First things first, have you had your breakfast? You haven't. Have you had your lunch? Okay. Um, I have eaten this morning, but I'm just finishing up with this juice. Um, I mentioned before, I've been trying to get on the, the healthier, pardon me, side of things. So it just has a little bit of hot water, a little kale in there, um, tangerines, well, they call them mandarins, but the same shit. Mandarin, uh, apple, green apple, uh, blueberries, um, banana, maca root powder, ashwagandha powder, root, uh, what else is there in there, like, I think I had a little pear, I think I had a, I think I put a pear in there, well, I sliced up some pear, so it has a little bit of fruit, a little bit of veggies in there, and, um, I'm just trying to keep myself going, you know how that is, one day at a time, hmm, For those individuals who lack a little cup of, of coffee or something in the morning, I'm not telling you not to have it. I will say if you are going to have a coffee, make sure you balance that out with one, a lot of water. When I say a lot, I mean that's up to you. Um, a lot is a subjective term, but I will say a couple of glasses a day. I mean, definitely in the morning, get yourself going with you know, a cup or two of water. But then throughout the day, just make sure you balance it out with water. Like The coffee isn't going to... like throw you off or anything um and it might add a little you know pep in your step but you want to get to the point where you are able to provide provide yourself with your own pep you know hopefully like you can get that own you know your own little pep going without the coffee um and once you do have that then the coffee is just like extra you know like look at the tea or you know and there's uh decaffeinated teas of course and there's decaf coffee i mean I mean, well, we'll get to that. Um, but, yo, but, uh, oh, man, my man Julius is hitting me up on the white collar goon tip. Um, but, yeah, you want to get to the point where you're able to, like, function on your own, you know, accord of your own volition and do what you need to do at a optimal level without, like, leaning on certain, like, crutches. Um, and, and coffee can be one of them, um, like... And things that are constructive, too. Like, if, if you need to lean on meditation, that's a good thing. And when I say lean on, it's like, that's a part of your system. Like, yeah, for sure, meditate, um, pray, you know, look through some scripture, read through some, you know, positive affirmations, read through your own journal, read through your diaries, read through uh, the dreams that you've been documenting, um, go for a run. Like, these types of things on a normal, consistent basis, um, that will position you to fully receive the universal Christ conscious uh, or activate that Christ consciousness that it is within all of us but it will position you to receive that uh, receive God and God is within you of course but it's like you know once you start to detach yourself from you know the incessant constant perpetual fluctuations of the mind in which we call like our thoughts and once our thoughts are taking us from here and there and they're just pulling us around and they're just sling us and slinging us about and, and and we're not in control we're not masters of our own mind but like as we start to become witnesses that's the term as we're able to witness and that comes with intro introspection that comes with you know meditation that comes with uh some type of self-effacing moment in time where you can look inwardly or look you know to yourself and ask like am I aware am I yeah am I aware am, am I 
who is answering that question of awareness and um once you once you are able to tap into your higher self the god that is within you and your spiritual self which is purity which is perfection which is uh divine oh my gosh oh my gosh now you're able to like now you're throwing out seven eight nine ten thousand different types of smoke when you step out but um before the smoke comes you just want to make sure that um you're on you're popping okay so um yeah so where am i at right now i was speaking to you yesterday or the previous video about uh the film that i saw he's just not that into you it's the it's the film from the 2000s, late 2000s. Um, it had the classics in there. Drew Barrymore, Scarlett Johansson, Ben Affleck, Kevin Connolly, Jennifer Connolly. Um, you know, it's just a whole lot of A-listers or B-listers or whatever alphabet you want to put, you know, or attach them to. They were, they were on a list for sure. Like big name Hollywood people. And... Um, whatever big name means but like yeah hollywood people and they're and they were doing their thing in the movie it's a great film um but i really want to go into like the title and, and flip it and talk about like she's not that into you bro like what what are the guys thoughts well, like what do men think when they aren't receiving uh, a certain outcome from the women that they're interested in, the women that they're intrigued by, the women that they like, the women that they admire, the women that are revered in their society, the women who, you know, who is their dream girl, essentially, so to speak, who are, like, what happens or what is the, what is the play-by-play, -play? what is the, what goes down, <laughs> and, and in a simple way of saying that, what goes down whenever there are guys who feel like, damn i'm not receiving that energy from that young lady and like i like her a lot or yo i am feeling some kind of way because you know homegirl is playing me out you know I, I thought i was um this that and the third i thought i was playboy um i thought i was you know super cool super suave super dope you know kind of guy and homegirl did me like robin Givens and boomerang i mean i still haven't seen that film but i, I really know how that goes down so it's like how do you guys really feel? Okay, so boom. Damn, my, my, my jumper's all up in the dirt. But this is okay. This, I mean, this, this, it's natural. Um, it's natural. Um, I was looking at the protagonist, and I guess there's a lot of characters in the film, but like the, the protagonist of the film, I forgot what her name was, but she's this uh, really sweet uh, young woman who wears her emotions on her sleeve and is very I will say high strung and emotional and just just a happy go lucky kind of girl but um is a bit flustered to say the least you know she she's going off on like I want to say just blind dates but random dates and she meets guys and you know she's pretty she's fit she's attractive um and she's wondering like hey these guys are saying they had a good time and they're they they say they enjoy themselves and you know she's like look at me you know I'm, she, and she doesn't say that but like she doesn't understand why she doesn't get callbacks from guys she's wondering like yo why what is up with with me or what is up with guys like why would they like sit in front of me and enjoy this date and not call me back or why do I meet these guys at bars and they give me their card and they say they're gonna hit me up and they don't hit me up or you know so she's like asking a lot of questions to her homegirl she goes to Jennifer Aniston and she goes to her her homegirl at the workplace who's Jennifer Connolly who's like proper fit Aniston's fit too but you know she's going to these you know different women and she's asking them like for their advice and um and they give her you know like good friends do they give her their honest opinion on how to go about it and you know i feel like it's remarkable to see it even though it's just a film it's remarkable to see how girls do the same things that guys do you know when, when guys like a woman you know it is difficult for them to one express it outwardly because put it this way i've mentioned this before 
guys tend to treat women differently based on their looks okay so that's pretty simple um, if you didn't think it was that simple it's literally that simple based on how you look to this particular guy to the respective guy whoever that guy is he has his own set of standards guidelines and parameters as to what is uh, hot to him what is well fit to him what is attractive to him and not just attractive like oh this puppy is cute that's attractive oh this is a nice car and it's a red corvette that's attractive like no 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 like this is like this girl or this woman has essentially everything that i have on my set of guidelines my parameters and she checks every box maybe even more so in the looks department so before she opens her mouth before you know what her name is, before you know what her family name is, before you know what her lineage is like, before you know her blood type, before you know if she's educated, before you if you know, before you know if she's sophisticated, refined, cultivated, uh, disciplined, uh, emotionally stable, any of these things, a guy is willing to simply jump out of the window and go all the way for it gung-ho based on what he sees initially okay and i won't say he's jumping out the window like you know to hurt himself it's more so like it's very simple how guys operate is she hot to him is she attractive to him okay now we can move forward with it like and moving forward the the moving forward part is kind of like the 20 percent 80 percent of it is like does she catch my eye you know and that's the initial aspect so for a lot of guys when they find girls who are on that end of the spectrum and i will call them the divine feminine who are i would just say um yeah the feminine archetype the divine feminine archetype because everybody's archetype is different um everybody's archetypal woman is different quintessential perfect and perfect isn't a word i like to use but perfection in the sense of their physical or physical or, or anatomy their aesthetic these types of things there's guys who says this is what i want she has what i want boom we're good we're good as long as she's not a killer as long as she's not a yeah no as long as she's not a million dollars in debt and, and even then he doesn't really care like as long as she you know <sighs> treats me nice and that's not even a, a thing it's like the physical thing is pretty is, is is pretty high for most men and when i say most men i'm talking like i can't speak to 99 percent because i don't know 99 percent of men but most men is definitely looks are in the in in the 80 percentile of the of the holistic department and i don't want women to be discouraged when they hear that i think depending on what age you are if you're listening to this video i think that's pretty understood by the time you're in like uh, you're you're 16 years old in high school but by the time you're a sophomore or junior in high school you realize like the guys who like the certain there's a certain archetype that all or most guys tend to like um or you find out that there are certain girls that get the bulk share of attention from men and i guess this inversely as well with with guys too um there's this there's the 80 20 rule the, the Pareto's principle but there's for women for sure they are able to physically see that there are certain aesthetics within women that the overwhelming majority tends to gravitate to right so um not to say that that means everything it just goes to show like they have physically seen this and witnessed this at an early age so whenever you find the young uh you know nia long walking by or the young lisa ray walking by or the young you know uh, you know robin gibbons or something walking by like you're 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 not going to be like flabbergasted when you find men like turning around or you're not going to be like blown away when you find like oh i like her like of course you do brother you know what i'm saying of course white guys like scarlett johansson of, of well any guys like scarlett johansson like of course they do but i mean it, there's there's a there is a reason as to why that is um and it's not a astronomical reason it's not quantum mechanics or quantum physics as to reason as 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 to the reason why they like her it's not the theory of relativity is why they like her it's like okay she has a nice body okay she has a pretty face okay she wears makeup okay she has a nice body okay boom that's it like it's, it's pretty it's pretty pretty straightforward i want to get into 
the fact that once they find these quote unquote archetypes, men have a difficulty. Women, ha um, men have a difficult time expressing themselves in an honest way to show that they like this, you know, respective woman. So I've mentioned how guys could be funny, guys can be loud, guys can be expressive, guys can be all of these kind of things in a guy-to-guy -guy situation, in a guy-to-guy -guy scenario, you know, but as soon as you bring in the opposite sex, in which I call sexual politics, the same guy who is loud making jokes, or the same guy who is goofy and silly, or the same guy who is uh, expressive and this, that, and the third, he, he could be well-spoken, he could be super smart, he could be super sharp, he could be whatever, uh, extremely perceptive. I find that once you add the opposite sex, all of a sudden, these guys change. Um, maybe they change for the better, maybe they change for the worse, but they change. And I have ascertained um, that they change simply because they want to put their best foot forward or they feel that if they were their normal selves around this very attractive archetypal quintessential divine woman then they won't like them for who they really are so it's like let me stay quiet or let me be stoic or let me be uh, mysterious or let me you know or or it can be the opposite you know end of the spectrum guys might get louder you know and they're talking like this but now that you know now they're going to talk a little louder and now they're going to their voice is going to get a little deeper those those boys who are just you know clowning around joking all of a sudden when the women come in now they're now their jokes get a bit more serious, you know, or now they're physically starting to like measure themselves up against each other. And now like maybe a fight might even break out or, you know, they were they were just playing around before. But, you know, the pretty ladies, the cheerleaders walked in or the the dancers walked in or the ballerina walked in or the the the, the, the super sophisticated CEO and businesswoman walked in or the, you know, just the attractive girl next door walked in whatever the case may be and now all of a sudden these guys are ready to like have their have a, have a like a duel or, or they're ready to to duel it out or, or, or battle it out or whatever the case may be to show to show their dominance to show their prominence to show their their purpose to show that they are masculine right so it's it's funny it's funny to see through the film or through the lens of the film, through the director's lens of the film, um, how like girls are at home and they're wondering why hasn't he called me or why did, why hasn't he made a move or why, like, why, why is he so reluctant to treat me a certain way when, when I'm looking at it and I've seen through my own experiences how many guys are utterly terrified. And I want to, I want to emphasize that word terrified of speaking to beautiful women like guys are paralyzed with fear stricken with fear and that is a root and that is a root of their or a root to their insecurities and to their inadequacies and maybe they aren't that insecure or inadequate but they might feel that way once they look at this beautiful attractive out of their league woman right it's like this girl wouldn't talk to me this girl wouldn't spend time with me this girl wouldn't date a guy like me that's what they that's what the ego is telling them that's what their pride is telling them that's what their fear is telling them so it's like there are so many guys who aren't on that end of the spectrum who are just walking around like some young brad pitt and just dating some you know hot beach girls from Southern California with the long legs and they're on the volleyball team for some Santa Barbara college. Like, yeah, I mean, there, there are some guys who are able to pull those kind of girls. There are some guys who are dating the, you know, flight attendants from, you know, the United Arab Emirates and, you know, and they're just doing their thing and, and they have a, you know, square jaw and they, and they fly private jets or some shit. Like, yeah, you know, that's, that's a, one percentile of the one percentile like the average guy doesn't have doesn't have that lifestyle 
nor does he have that type of reaction from women, nor does he get that reaction from women, not because he physically can, it's because there's something within him that's telling him that, like, that's not for me. I mean, maybe for DiCaprio, he can be dating some hot Russian supermodel, but, like, not a guy like me. Or maybe for Idris Elba, he can be dating the, the, the Miss Ethiopia or Miss... East Africa or Miss West Africa or Miss Cape Town like but but not not a guy like me I just I'm just a struggling electrician um, I'm just a farmer in the middle of Nebraska you know but you know it's, it's it's their mind that is telling them it's the ego that is telling them it's the pride that is telling them that that they can't do these things so I mean I know I've been going off on a tangent or I've been giving you a lot of uh, part and parcel information but uh, guys, it's not about if she's just not that into you. A lot of women feel that yeah, a lot of women will be honest and, and, and tell you straight up, like, no, bro, I'm not that into you. Um, or in the lack of better terms, if she's not picking up the phone and, and you've asked her out or you've spoken to her and you've, you know, expressed your intrigue and interest and she's not there for it, like, you should take that for face value, surface value internal value like she's probably not going to be that into you bro but truth of the matter is i think guys would be surprised i think guys would be appalled i think guys would be taken aback i think guys would be blown away by how many women or how often women would be inclined to give guys a chance or a shot if they just were forthcoming if they had confidence and the confidence is not something that you can turn on like a light switch. A confidence isn't like charm. I mean, is 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 akin to a charm or a person who is charming. It's not a light switch where it's like, I'm going to be charming to the woman that looks like Shakira, but, you know, the grandma that's pushing her card in the food line, like, I'm going to walk by her and pretend like I don't see her. Like, no, no. Like, you need to have that same level of um, confidence and and selflessness and forth. And the, and the sense of forthcoming and, and forthrightness and, and honesty and intrigue and, and resilience and resolve. You need to have that with the same way that you will talk to your grandma's friends at the nursing home. And the same way that you will talk to your little niece and, and nephew's friends at a preschool party. And the same way that you will talk to Miss you know tika sumter that, that's walked in and, and her and her homegirls are super hot girls that just graduated from clark atlanta and spellman and you saw the aka's and deltas and their bodies looking right and their hair is looking right and their nails are looking right and everything is right like if 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 you are if you if you just are aware of yourself internally and you ask yourself am i aware who am i you won't identify with the ego you won't identify with your thoughts you won't identify with your pride you will identify with god and once god is permeating through you oh my gosh those women if you have an issue with women or if you're looking for women or if you want to speak with women uh, that'll be the least of your worries god bless namaste namaskar